almost all the ethnic groups and fractions across West Africa from from the uh, from the Senegambia to to the Cameroon they tended to have the same cultural stamp and when you talk about the languages all the languages we are very similar a common a common linguistic a common linguistic uh, broadband can be said to have covered almost all the groups the only the only languages in Nigeria that are of a different uh, group they be Hausa and and uh, the languages the Nilo Saharan languages up like the Chad Kanuri and the rest of, and the rest of them that had mixed very much with the languages of Northern Africa. Otherwise, virtually all the languages of Nigeria are part of a common language complex. The Yoruba, the Fulani, the Fulani, the Bo, Edo, virtually all the languages of Nigeria tend to have a common stamp in terms of the words they share. Usually Fulani is considered a language outside the Nigerian fold by very many people who remember only the great move into Nigeria towards the 18th and 19th century that formerly le that led to the, the jihad. But from immemorial time, The Yoruba, the Igbo, the Fulani belong to the same language family. And if it is about counting the root words in, in the two in the in all the languages, they have common root words, which is to say that that run from the Futajalon down to the to the Niger and the I mean down down to the Delta and the sea. All of them had had such strong common linkages that it would have been proper for somebody for somebody to put them within the same country if the Europeans did not come. There is a sense in which the Fulani were different because they never created large conurbations. They never created such large cities as you may have found, say, in Yoruba land or in Hausa land. So that you, 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 many, many historians normally treat them as if they came later. They did not come later. They have always had to interact with all the, all the nations and ethnic groups in virtually all the other parts of Nigeria. If, if a group of people pass through your country, every every season they may not own land but they consistently pass through your 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 nations for whatever purpose whether for trade war or whatever it is 
there is always a tendency in which siblinghood develops between them so that you don't talk about them so much as outsiders. You talk, uh, talk about them as one of us. What destroyed that feeling of one of us was largely the slave trade, in which the Fulanese played a role in turning other ethnic nationalities into non-citizens. But even while that was going on, it never changed the language pattern. I, d I decided to deal with the Hausa, the, the full, full and the question first because they belong to the same language group as the Yoruba and the Igbo. And, uh, and the, the Hausa, whom they eventually organized and conquered, were actually not of the same language group as the Fulani. It was after they began to interact intensely with the Fulani at religious and occupational levels that they began to develop a language, very, very interesting language uh, uh, symmetry. Because you see, they never, even when after they conquered the, the Hausa, they did not impose full bay. They did not in, impose their own language on the Hausa. They had acquired Hausa through trade and war. And they simply adopted it as their language. And once they adopted Hausa as their language, it meant that it meant that the overlordship that they were exercising over the Hausa or any of the other groups that spoke Hausa was not one of linguistic hegemony at all and it meant it meant that they were the ones subdued by the language of the conquered and wherever that happens where the the conquerors take over the language of those they have conquered there is always there's always a pattern of relationship that emerges it means that it means that you are being constantly forced you have, it means that the conquered are being constantly forced to denature themselves because in, our, in order for sovereignty and hegemony to be exercised by conquerors they must demean and belittle those they have those they have conquered and therefore a, a language of common citizenship did not emerge in northern Nigeria those who are the conquerors simply trapped their conquered in such a way that only they could govern. I mean, at the level of language, they interacted, but at the level of gov governance, they did not interact. And because there was that distance between the the, the conquered and the conqueror, it also meant that they, uh, they could take over the demographics, the huge number of the conquered, without necessarily treating them as common citizens. Up to today, you still find people 
talking about, I mean, speaking speaking about that relationship in terms of, they will say a cado is a cado and a pulo is a pulo. That is to say, long standing at the relationship between the conquered and the conqueror and the conqueror have been the most serious matter the most serious matter is really that 